In this month's Around the Table conversation, Robin, Sherry, Dana, and I get to talk about the times we experience God's utter delight for us and the times we lose sight of the fact that he always delights in us. So let's jump right into the conversation. So welcome everyone to the Deepening Communities Around the Table Zoom. Tonight is super special for us. You may have noticed that Maggie and Dana are in the same little square. That's right. <laughs> Dana is with us. We are all at the beach together, spending some time together. And we love having Dana, our far-flung friend, with us. Every time, all the time we get to spend with her is such a treat, a gift, truly a delight. So Robin, how are you coming in tonight? I am <clears throat> coming in with a frog in my throat, mm -hmm. clearly. Uh, <laughs> that's your nickname or chocolate it's, ice cream. It is my nickname. Yeah, it might be the chocolate ice cream. But this is my sixth trip in the past like eight weeks. That's a lot. It has been a lot. So I'm coming in. I came in tired. Mm -hmm. And yet even after these 24 hours, I feel so much more refreshed mm -hmm. and it's been so good to be with you all mm -hmm. it's been so good to be on the beach and the sunshine and getting my toes in the sand mm -hmm. that first mm -hmm. initial toes in the mm -hmm. sand feels mm -hmm. so good mm -hmm. so yeah it's good to be here yeah how about you dana yeah it feels really good to be at the beach with friends and i am coming in windblown and satiated from an amazing Wagyu burger, Wagyu lobster burger that I had for dinner out tonight. <laughs> that was delicious. Mm -hmm. And I love that we're all cozy in the house right now. It's raining outside. It's mm -hmm. perfect night, really. Pouring. Sunny day, pouring rain night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, couldn't have planned it better. Mm -hmm. How about you, Maggie? How are you coming in, friend? I'd say I'm coming in satisfyingly tired from several <laughs> hours of boogie boarding earlier today. I was in the waves. We found some boogie boards at the house we're staying at, and I was pretending I was like 12. It was very, very fun. So, and me and Robin were standing on the shore watching you and yeah. Jerry pretending to be your mom. <laughs> uh -huh. We were clapping for you when you would ride the waves. Did you see us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well done. Yay. Thank you. Be safe. Be careful. Yeah. So we would love to know how you guys are all coming in. So put that in the chat. Um, how are you coming in tonight? And then um, Sherry, how about you? How are you coming? I am just sure it's sheer delight. Being at the beach for me is so life-giving. I can't even express with words how good it feels and even more so with friends. Mm -hmm. So taking a sunrise walk, playing in the waves with Maggie, walking on the beach with Dana, sitting in the sand with Robin, it's just all delight, all delight. So mm -hmm. that's how I'm coming in, feeling God's delight for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so speaking of delight, I would love, Dana, if you would invite us into our conversation tonight. Okay, I would be happy to. I am reading... Um, Kurt Thompson's new book is called The Deepest Place. Um, and I came upon a section in the book that just stopped me. And I'd love to set it up for us and talk about it a little bit. Um, so the scene is Eve is in the garden and she's being tempted by the enemy. And when he comes to her, she there's complete innocence. There's no sin. She's been fathered well. But he begins to question God's character to Eve. Um, and his heart towards Adam as well. Like, did God really say, insinuating mm -hmm. that God's withholding something from them? And she starts believing his lies. And in this moment, I love what Kurt Thompson said. It just captured me. He said, Eve in this moment appears unaware of God's utter delight in her. She acts instead in response to a wound of shame that the serpent inflicted. Mm -hmm. And the line that stopped me is that she appears unaware of God's utter delight in her. And as I read this, I resonated with it on one level. And I thought, oh my gosh, I, yes, she is utterly delighted yeah. in God. I see, I see that the way that they walk together in the mm -hmm. cool of the day, every day, the garden that he put them in. Mm -hmm. And what's true for Eve is true for me. Mm -hmm. And what's true for me is true for all of all us, of us. Mm -hmm. and how easily we forget that. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so when I read these questions, when I read that statement, mm -hmm. questions like rose up in me, mm -hmm. when, when and where in my story have I experienced God's utter delight? Mm -hmm. Can I name some of those places? And then the other question is where in my story have I lost sight of his utter delight? And I want to, that's where I want to go with all of yes. us tonight. And we had some great conversations about this today, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I would love to explore this together. Um, and I wish we could have recorded what we said earlier. <laughs> we have to now. It'll be sure better it now. Cause we yeah. have more friends with us. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, Robin, I would love for you to pipe in here mm -hmm. with, with a sense of God's delight story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I saw some of, you know, if you've been at the deepening weekend, 11, 11, when mm -hmm. I see 11, 11 on the clock, that is just a way that, um, not every single time, but a lot of times when I see it, I feel like Jesus just knows that I needed to see that right mm -hmm. now. It seems really timely and really kind. And I feel delighted in and seen by my father, God. Mm -hmm. um, and then really today, I, I've, I've been thinking about how I have really sensed God's delighted me these past several weeks as I've really seen God moving in specific ways with me. I, I've seen him orchestrating some events and arranging some conversations and causing some significant things to converge, beautifully setting me up. I feel like beautifully set up. You know, we can be set up in some not so good ways. I feel beautifully set up with opportunities that then I get to, I get to have a choice mm -hmm. how I want to step into them or not. Um, I have choice to move in those opportunities to say yes or no, to mm -hmm. pursue taking that training mm -hmm. or not to, uh, to say yes to, um, a mission that my husband wants me to go on with him or to be thoughtful and, and say, you know, I don't feel like this is in line with where I'm being invited by God right now and, and to where I most bring, um, my glory. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not where I'm feeling compelled to pursue right now with God. These are the areas where I feel like God's really leading me. Um, so i I really believe it delights God's heart when he sees me becoming more and more of who he made me to be. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as I, his image bear, bring his image to bear in the world in ways that only I can do. Mm -hmm. So I believe it delights the heart of God as he sees me experiencing healing in areas where I have been previously bound and mm -hmm. not yet free and silent and saying yes and agreeing to things be out of obligation, out mm -hmm. of duty, out of what I thought was obedience um, in ways that I think I've assumed that I, that I should. Mm -hmm. um, but as I've explored more of my story, I'm coming to see that a lot of my consent was about what I thought was obedience and not really knowing who I was, mm -hmm. not really knowing how the spirit actually moves with me mm -hmm. and invites me to move with him into places of wisdom that he and I have been cultivating and um, moving. So yeah, I sense God's delight as I'm learning more of how we move together. And that's been really sweet. They know what I love that. Mm, thanks. Um, yeah, for me, um, a couple things. One is my husband and I were out taking a walk with Oscar recently, and I see a ton of yellow swallowtail butterflies all the time, but hardly ever do I see monarchs. And we were walking and I saw a monarch fly by us and I was trying to follow his path. I'm like, oh, monarch, isn't he beautiful? And, and he was gone, but just to notice it. And we went on our way. And the next morning, my husband got up really early to go to work. And I came downstairs to my study where I have quiet time in the morning. And on my study door, there is a monarch butterfly in my study. I could not believe it. Okay. Inside the house. Like inside the house. Wow. And I, it, it just stopped That's me. Amazing. And 
felt, I felt God's delight that he saw me. He saw what my heart leapt at. And he said, here you go. Here's one. Here's one. I see you. Uh, and that's so precious. And then just even in the current season that we're living in now, um, having Jeff's parents live with us, my in-laws, my 98 year old father-in-law who has dementia. Um, it's been, it's been hard, but it's been mostly so sweet. There are a lot of moments that are hilarious and inappropriate comments that we laugh at. And then there's a lot of these moments where I hear, do you know, my father-in-law say, do you know that I love you? And I'm like, yes, pop. Do you know that I love you too? And I'll say it again, 10 minutes later, but every time my husband comes into the room, even if it's out of his periphery, my father-in-law will say, is that my Jeffrey? And so sweet times as we're really literally walking him home. I don't know how long that walk will be, but it really is a beautiful way to pour out and to see God's delight over him and over us and over this season. Mm -hmm. And Maggie, how about you, girl? Well, I shared, I'd asked this question in our, in the Facebook group earlier this week, kind of prepping for tonight. So I'm actually going to share so, a handful of you actually might've seen that, but I'm going to share something that happened to me this, just this last week, I was cooking in my kitchen and I look out over my backyard from my kitchen. And so one evening this week, I looked up from where I was cooking and the sight I beheld literally brought tears to my eyes it was just that breathtaking um the light streams through the trees that are like behind our yard um and it the shadows cast these like stripes of trees across our grass um and it just and then there's like small little green leaves there that the light is coming through like way back in the woods and so it literally cast this green glow and then right at the edge of my grass as my are my zinnias which I'm obsessed with but they're purple and so just this light green glow with the purple and in the evening and it just caught me and I was just blown away and I literally stopped exactly what I was doing and I went out and stood right next to my zinnias and I took some pictures and videos but it just felt to me like a taste of Eden and it felt like God was showing me very clearly like he was calling to me in that beauty and um just that he was showing me his glory like not showing off but kind of like look what I can do. And you're the only one that's seeing this. And you said that that meant something to you because earlier when we were yeah, talking. Yeah. So, um, about a week before that, maybe two weeks before I, I felt the Lord whisper to me that he is throughout my life. And right now in particular as well, that he has used beauty to comfort me mm -hmm. and that, um, so a little bit of my story is I was a French major in college and felt very much called to that. And always kind of like, Lord, I don't really know why I enjoy it. I love it, but this feels really impractical. And I ended up teaching ESL and not French. So even to this day, I'm kind of like, why? Um, but a few weeks ago, I felt like the Lord was saying to me, even that. So because I studied French, I studied abroad for a summer and I felt like he was saying the beauty and the freedom I got to experience that summer was what I needed. And that's the whole reason I studied French. Mm -hmm. Um, at least, yeah, I mean, that's what he was saying. And that he is coming from my heart with beauty in the places of grief. When I was in college, my dad, I was processing through my dad's illness with multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. And I was in deep, deep grief, particularly that summer. And just being able to wander around French towns and see the countryside and go to Monet's house and see his garden. I mean, it was, it was luxurious beauty that, um, that God provided in really a cool way. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and even now it with doing art, I feel like he's even saying I'm an artist and even just, I get to spend like 10 hours or five hours or three hours looking at a, at a zinnia mm -hmm. and painting it. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like deep into the beauty and that, that is comforting me. So he's coming from my heart. And as I was describing this earlier today, I was literally burst into tears, mm -hmm. um, because it just feels extravagant and that he's saying, your heart matters so much. I would have you study this whole thing for a whole college degree mm -hmm. just because you mattered. It wasn't about you being used or, right. you know, going on mission to do this thing and make sense out of it. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was breathtaking for me. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I, I love how 
the zinnias can bring you back to that and mm -hmm. the light streaming through the trees in your backyard you know that it's some place that's so present can take you so many places in your story mm -hmm. as you feel his delight and his yeah just being aware of his delight over you yeah you. and but you yeah. sharing? well and we were when we were talking earlier and I was sharing a little bit um it's funny how being outside for me I remember back at the deepening weekend, I was talking about sea glass and how at the beach, just poignant, poignant awareness of God and his presence and his delight over me as I'm walking on the beach and finding sea glass. And in this season, although that's not untrue, it's almost more about just the presence and awareness, my being present and my being aware when I'm on whatever day of the week out in the garden. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've am i been choosing to be out there barefoot because I want to feel the dirt under my feet. I want to feel the wet grass in my toes. And I want to be able to touch and feel the fig leaves and how they feel just a little bit fuzzy and the smell of them that just has this earthy, fruity and when Dana brought this up and how it goes back to Eve and Eve being aware of the utter delight of the father. And I'm thinking, where was Eve in the midst of that? She was in the garden. Mm -hmm. And so it, it just felt like it all came together, that mm -hmm. presence, that awareness, that just being with him and in the simplicity, not having to go anywhere or do anything. I don't, I don't even know that there are any words exchanged, mm. but I know that there's too a gratefulness as I'm thanking God for my feet and I'm thanking mm -hmm. God for my toes as they can mm -hmm. scrunch around in the dirt mm -hmm. and uh, for the strong feet that take me three miles down the beach this morning. Yeah. You know, so it's, I don't know that it's necessarily an awareness of God loving me, but there is such a feeling of his delight mm -hmm. over me. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like a very embodied experience yeah. Yeah. When, it, when it's such a sensual experience, mm -hmm. you're feeling the dirt, you're mm -hmm. grounded in mm -hmm. the earth that God made and you're smelling and you're tasting and you're seeing and mm -hmm. you're feeling it. Yeah. And we experience God in those moments. Yes. They're really holy, sacred moments. Yes. Yes. And before now, I don't think, I mean, this whole going into the garden and gardening barefoot has been part of that. Because I think I typically would just so quickly go through and I love the garden. I love the delight and I'm taking pictures because I want to remember. But to slow it all down for me is has been really significant because I can I have a to do list. I'm going 120 miles an hour because there's a lot going on. But to slow down and just be present to the present moment mm -hmm. has been significant. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Aren't you calling it gardening yoga? <laughs> yes, I, I'm doing gardening yoga because there's an awful lot of twisting and turning and squatting and stretching and all those things. So yes, <laughs> yes, garden yoga with Jesus. I love all those mm -hmm. stories. And I know we, and we want to hear from you guys in a few minutes, but also want to turn to the other question about where are those moments in our lives where we lose the sense of his delight? Um, it's really never lost but we lose sight of it, right? We lose sense of it at times. And I wanna talk about that too. And when Robin and I were walking on the beach this morning, I, I'm like, Robin, I have to ask you that question. Where have you lost a sense of God's delight? And honestly, I asked her because I wanted to know that Eve and I are not the only ones who lose sight of the Father's delight. Mm -hmm. I wanna hear that I'm not alone in that. And um so it was important for me to hear your response, Robin. Um, hmm. And for me, recently, I'll share a recent a recent scenario with me. Is when I was younger, because of my story, I have I've had a lot of negative self talk that would run unfiltered and unedited through my mind, um, thinking they were my thoughts and that they were true statements and there was this huge turning point in my journey where I don't have time to go into it now, but where I learned through different people, through scripture, through the Holy spirit to discern the voice of God and his heart towards me, his voice. 
um, how he thinks, what he sees, and it has been super liberating for so long. Um, but during a trip that my husband and I were on over the summer, um, I was taken out with this old voice that reared its head because of some, because of some legitimate circumstances in my life. And I fell into this, I just fell back into it and I couldn't shake it for like a month. Um, I knew that they, that at this season in my life, I'm like, I know this isn't true about me. I know this isn't my voice. I know this isn't God's heart, but I couldn't shake it. Um, and um, yeah, we were in the midst of, we were in the midst of a lot of beauty at the time we were together, my husband and I having a really sweet time. And yet at the same time, inwardly, I was struggling. I was struggling with being in this season. I'm thankful that I'm walking out of it now, but it was hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. 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 And I remember Dana, as you shared that this afternoon or this morning, and I was, I was thinking about how we were mothered and you mentioned the father's delight and I, I it makes me curious about how each one of us, how did we know delight mm -hmm. uh, and, or not as we looked into the face of our mother mm -hmm. or a primary caregiver, did we experience secure attachment mm -hmm. or not? Did we how we each are able to, to answer that question is really significant because it will hugely affect how and, and if we're able to feel and experience delight. Mm -hmm. So it's right. really important. So yeah. And you and I shared a little bit about our different stories of mothering and, and yeah. attachment. Yeah. That we could talk about another time, but, or now, mm -hmm. or whatever, but yeah, yeah. It's really significant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's been an invitation for us to consider what, what did I experience of delight in my story? Because how I'm able to recognize and experience delight from God is directly related to that. Mm -hmm. And so Dana, when, when we were talking this morning, you, you said through, and I agreed through the kind provision of God, we're able to reparent. We have the opportunity to reparent ourselves mm -hmm. and we get to offer that to each other. And that's mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Such healing can come from that and experiencing the mother heart of God, mm -hmm. experiencing fathering and mothering in ways that we haven't experienced mm -hmm. before is can really change how we're able to experience delight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And care in the midst of what's happening. I mean, I think yeah. about even last night we're mm -hmm. here at the beach. I just happened to check my voicemail email and find out, oh my gosh, something has happened that it's not life shattering. It is not, but it's disruptive to plans that we've made. Yeah. It was derailing. To, it was derailing mm -hmm. for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. Cause we thought we had this all nailed down and to find out that we are not on the same page, me and this other person who are doing this planning. And it was so baffling to me. And I just could feel myself physically like shrinking mm -hmm. and feeling like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't say it, but it's, I felt so incompetent. Mm -hmm. Like, how did this happen? How could I let this happen? Mm -hmm. How could this have happened? And in the midst of sharing it with my friends, although you guys didn't try to make it better, you didn't try to tell me that I wasn't incompetent, but you shared some truth about what you saw in the situation. The, mm -hmm. of course you didn't see this coming, mm -hmm. you know, so your words. We and asked your a lot of questions you, too. You did. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just, it made such mm -hmm. a difference mm -hmm. to be reminded that what's happening is not a judgment of who I am. Mm -hmm. And Dana asked some other questions about where that takes me back in my story. You know, why, why is that the word that I hear? Why is that what I hear from the accuser? Why is that what I hear from my story? And, you know, here we are 24 hours later, I've texted with that person, that person meant to do some things that he didn't do. And all of a sudden we're back on track. So it just what a difference it made in the in-between though, to, to receive that care and those questions and that mm -hmm. reminding of who I am. Mm -hmm. So experiencing God's delight, even in the midst of that, in the midst yeah. of, ah, it's yes. really important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I think yeah. too, we were talking about, so what do you do when you don't feel as delight? And I don't know that we're going to give an answer to that because it's not prescriptive. There's not a one, two, three, there's not a, you need to do this or that. I right. mean, it's listening and caring for each other would be the only place we could go and be mm -hmm. one minute that we'd even want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dana, what were some things that we talked about on the beach when we were talking about when have we not experienced delight? You were telling me what well, I shared about um, just over the summer and and that really it comes from, from my story, you know, from the way that I was parented out of, and my parents have their own story, but um, out of their brokenness, I was parented in a broken way and I was missed and, you know, and you, I like what, you know, and then I'm like, well, Robin, tell me, you know, tell me that this is, happens to you too. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> and yeah. you were sharing that you were sharing about how you were mothered um, and secure attachment with your mother. But when, what was it you said earlier about when? Yeah, I said um, yeah. when there's you, disruption. Right. When there's disruption, when there is something that comes that feels traumatic to me, that feels like the rug has been pulled out mm -hmm. from under me, mm -hmm. I panic and I feel like I'm free falling. Mm -hmm. And for the for the first time, I e think I equated that really clearly with secure attachment with my mom until there gets to a point where something happens with her, something happened in mm -hmm. her story or in our family, and then she would freeze. Mm -hmm. So th then it's, it's just, it is so, I feel it in every cell mm -hmm. of my being. And so, yeah, we were just talking about when that's not there, what do you do? How do you, um, how do you, and I can't remember what we, what, what we then said, I think we, that's when we were talking about the, the opportunity to be reparented mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that God, and that God is gonna, that God comes to our rescue, you mm -hmm. know, as first and foremostly, mm -hmm. um, and can we watch for him and look for him and yeah. Well, and, 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 bring him. People and, and brings yeah. resources and, mm -hmm. and I think to ask him to like, to invite him back into those right. stories exactly. but, and it makes me think of your poem like the scooping up the girl like mm -hmm. lord would you scoop me up and hold me in that time um mm -hmm. but also and would you bring people to me mm -hmm. who can help mm -hmm. be those the body of christ yeah love mm -hmm. love you well yeah mm -hmm. yeah we need each other mm -hmm. yeah tell mm -hmm. each other the truth mm -hmm. yeah no doubt yeah oh gosh 30 minutes goes by really fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Dana, for bringing us into this space. Uh, what a beautiful exploration and consideration, you know, especially as we wander into the place of, of how we were parented. And I think about Eve had the perfect parent. Yeah. And yet, and yet she lost sight of his delight in her, you know, so, so will we. Mm -hmm. Why and are we surprised? So, <laughs> right. And so we will seek him. Did this conversation pique your curiosity about God's utter delight in you? We hope so. And we've included in the description below several resources to help you dig deeper. So go ahead and check that out. We would love for you to join us for our monthly live around the table gathering, where we invite you in the second half of the call to answer the questions and share your stories. You can always find the link for that at thedeepeningcommunity.com. If you enjoyed this video, would you take a moment to subscribe to Zoe's YouTube channel, to like it and to share it and to comment. Thank you so much. See you next time.